Thank you. <laughs> Just in case I need to know this. What book is that? Aussie Slang Dictionary. Oh, yes. Well, that'll start you, start, start you on your uh, life by, task by, by and learning how to speak English properly. <laughs> by the end of this tour, I'm just going to have this like, stack of books to go home. Today is day three of training, and today I'm actually going to get Jim, the founder of Jim's Mowing, to give me a tour of the whole facility and their headquarters. So, I'm looking forward to it. This, is, this was like 21 acres, this whole place? 20 acres, yeah. 20 acres, nice. How is the... Uh, impact of like the interest rates going up is that substantial on real estate yet or not really a whole lot yeah it's starting to have an impact yeah some of the prices are going down yeah i think it, i think it will i think it'll crash the industry a bit right yeah this is the nerve center over here that's the call center cool we actually have you can see there this tells you the average wait time which is 10 seconds cool. which is the limit 92 percent on target three percent abandoned calls yeah. these are very important statistics because this is the lifeblood that that's that's the time yep you, average you, wait time you, you, you cannot wait and it's very difficult because our system needs to be trained it takes a person six months to learn how to answer calls properly in our call center yeah how do you deal with training like because i know like we're the same thing like you train people so long but then like, even the past couple of years the churn is so much yeah how do you deal with that you just keep on training them yeah it's just a constant process you're constantly hiring constantly training we, we're trying to actually reward them more yeah. that's a large part of the thing like for example we've got a um we had a trivia night last night and we said anybody from the staff want to come in we join the trivia night have, have dinner on us tonight we've got a games night going same mm -hmm. thing we'll come and play games and you know cheat and you know, card games and Jim's Monopoly we're going to be playing out yeah. and chess. We give them lunches once a week and we just give them a pay rise. And, and we also give them a, a way to go because a lot, of the, a lot of the ladies in here actually, in, including Steph, actually started off in the call centre. And they actually went to the call centre, became leaders and managers and then we hired, we bribed them to come across here. <laughs> There's a real career path. Yeah. So you can actually rise from working in a call centre into management in Jim's group. So that, that's a big plus for us. Mm -hmm. But you've got to look after your staff. You've got to make sure it's a great, it's a great environment to them and yeah. treat them well. And I, I wander around and say hello to people and so forth and just. I wanted to ask about the software. I know you've talked about how much you spend on the software and trying to make it better and everything. Like that's been our big struggle too, is just the software side, trying to build what we need, but the cost of it is. Well, we're spending something like $5 million a year yeah. on software development yeah. alone. And that's not including sort of support and networking and stuff. It's a big, big project. But it does actually create a competitive advantage because no competitor can come anywhere close right. to what we do. They just can't possibly compete with how we do it. Yeah. The bigger we get, the more we can afford to spend on IT, and, and the bigger the advantage. We'll be able to book jobs directly into their diaries. We'll be able yeah. to buy and sell regular clients. We'll be able to have a reminders of jobs not done. We'll be letting clients know what's happening. A, a, a dedicated client app that they can actually check what's going on. They can ring. They can get a service done by pressing a button. There's just there's so much we can do. Yeah. We haven't even put our small toe in the water with what I, what, what IT will do over the next few years. What are all changes that they having to make to kind of change from just taking the leads to actually booking the uh, jobs now? Yes, that's what, that's what they do it. So is it mostly just the training side or the technology side that really you're working on for that? Well, this is, this is the training the staff to take the calls. The technology is different. Got it. We're, we're constantly um, upgrading the, uh, the systems and trying to make them better right. in terms of IT. As Joel said, it's a long way to go, but this is uh, the nerve center. This is where the leads come in. It's open basically about 7 a.m. till about 9 p.m. Okay. But we're looking at going to a 24-hour model soon. Got it. Most it's still people. all housed here? Um, the the after-hour stuff would have to come from some of the Philippines. It's too Got expensive it. here. Right, right, right. So we, 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 we answer calls preferentially locally because right. people local accents, people understand you. People prefer local people, but yeah, a lot of the back office work is now done yeah. in the Philippines. Yeah, that's awesome. How's it going? Italia. Yeah. Originally, Jim's was a one one room office, and I had people answering the calls, but I pick up the phone myself quite often, yeah. which I haven't done for a while now because it's a really industrial process. But yeah, it's good to do things yourself, I find, because it, it, it helps you understand the struggles people go through. Mm -hmm. So, as far as possible, I keep in touch with all my franchisees, as you know. Mm -hmm. They've all got my phone number and email address, and I will probably have contact with you know, at least dozen 15 franchises a day in one way or another yeah. often about complaints or queries or just questions and they, they all contact me and they know, they know they can yeah
everyone talks about 50, 60% of small businesses failing, but what they forget to realize is that that includes basically any you know, entity under 50 employees. That includes a Taco Bell and a McDonald's or whatever. The failure rate of cleaning and gardening business in a worldwide, from the best stats that I've seen from the States and everywhere else, is about 90 to 95% in the first yeah. year. Because obviously if you buy a shop, you're a lot more committed. But if you right. go into a, your own cleaning business or something, it's, it's very easy to fail. Most of them fail. And they're deeper pockets. If they have a million dollars to spend in their build-out, they're probably... They'll keep going for a while It's a write-off. So our first year attrition rate is around 12%. Right. which is much too high, yeah. but it's, it's a heck of a lot better than 90% or 95%. You well, said at the beginning, before you did the training, it was 75. 17%. Oh, 17. 17, not 17. 17. I was going to 17. 17. Yeah, My I'm goodness. still learning the accent. Come on now. 17. Look. Don't worry, if you spend enough time in Australia, you'll learn to speak properly as well. Hey, my mom's from Australia, Western Australia. Really? She is. Didn't but, catch. Oh no, I, I didn't, haven't picked up oh, any right. of it. Yeah, for your joke, I was going to say last I, night, I could help I, you out I cannot one. do a Texan <laughs> accent. I, well then you I can't can... get me for a no Aussie accent, come on now. <laughs> but I, I speak properly already, Mike, I need to learn how. you got to stoop down to our level. <laughs> I can do certain accent, I'll do a German accent. They have ways of making you talk. <laughs> Uh, I can do, um, I can speak like an Irish accent. Irish, I, yeah, I can do that, that one. one. If I could learn to speak like a Texan, I would. I would. The TikTok views would go from 100,000 to 200,000, just like that. <laughs> That's the next career move, is comedian. I think, I think I'll stick to my day job. Franchising, thinking. epigenetics, comedian. That looks good in a bio. I do, well, I do probably at least a, a podcast once a week. Mm -hmm. I just talk to anybody or anything, including kids and teenagers and everybody, and they just record it and they can use it. It's all good for social media. That's such a big thing these days. It's been really impressive. I do think the reason we've grown so much post-COVID has been because of the social media has been so good. Most franchisees have actually, most prospects have actually seen. Yeah. Well, yesterday they asked who here watched YouTube videos before coming, every single person. Yeah. Raise their hand. They do. Yeah. We want this. We want to get everyone together. This is the goal, right? Because right now we have five different offices all across the county. So we're trying to build something not this nice or this big, but something that we can bring everyone together. It's just nice to have that camaraderie and not be traveling between. I'm just like Jim, I hate traveling, commuting. So driving between offices is annoying. There are three for like the call center and another, uh, another office and then a training facility. It's just trying to bring out one house that everyone can be together and have that yeah. team. It's good. It's a great feeling actually. If you've, you've seen what's happened, what, the impression of training. We, we, people get what we call gymified. Yeah. They, they pick up the culture. Mm -hmm. We find having the in-person training where they're there and yep. they, they meet people like myself and Dan and everybody else and they get to know each other. It, it, it builds a, a culture which is very quite powerful. Yeah. A very strong sense of community in our franchisees, mm -hmm. which you often hear about. They, 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 they like each other, they meet together, they help each other a lot. Yeah. And we try and encourage that kind of feeling. Of yeah, when they come for training, it's nice to be able to actually see this happening, see the calls, and see the staff in the, you know, the conference center, and that's what you know, we need to do. Because just otherwise it just seems so fragmented. Training them here, and then offices over here, and call center over here, and then, no, oh, it's very, very impressive. To how you sort of run the finances of your business. Day four of training. A little bit of a late start because they're doing first aid this morning. Obviously, I can't get certified in Australia. I don't have any ID. So, on a long run in the rain, it was great. You've got to get the quality right. So, you've got to get your lines spot on and you've got to get your speed. Once you've got your quality, the speed will follow. So, you've got to concentrate on getting the quality first. Now, I'm going to use a term here that I'm going to use a bit today. First three months, you will be necessarily inefficient. Everything we need to do most jobs is there and here. Uh, we overloaded a trailer one time. Probably had like 10,000 kilos in it when it shouldn't have had that much. We were backing it up down a driveway on a, like on a cliff side. Yeah, it just it was overloaded. And so we were backing up, it was grayed down. And so everything was locked up but we just kept sliding and it went over the edge fortunately it detached correctly and we lost the trailer but no one died Cling sits on the tow ball and it clicks into place behind here is a little little um catch and if that catch is not caught under the under the tow ball it'll pop off got a very fine leaf structure again it's uh, the rhizome is very uh it grows it creeps along the ground Yeah. 
This morning was not great. I'm in Australia, so I've been waking up about 3.30, 4 o'clock a.m. our time. That's already like halfway through the day in Washington State up over in the U.S. So they're already halfway through their day. Tons of emails have already been in my inbox. So unfortunately this morning, I got the news that one of our team members out in the field that work at one of the locations that I own took their own life last night. So the managers are handling it and having a meeting with the entire team and things, but it just stinks. It's not something you wanna wake up to in the morning. I probably only spent a minute or two talking to this individual. Uh, they'd worked for several months and they were solid, honestly, and probably had a really good future inside the company, but obviously these personal things happen and I know it's probably not politically correct for me to talk about this, but I've always, in my mind, I've always just told myself. And one thing I think about when it comes to suicide and things is uh, it's, what seems like a long-term solution to a very short-term problem. And if you'd fast forward two or three years, you'd probably not even remember the things you were going through or what was making you mad or unhappy. And um, it's not the route you should go. So reach out to somebody. And that's why it's so important for us as business owners to have support, have a community that we reach out to and we feel low. I feel like there's no option or hope. So yeah, tough morning.